morning. The Lord is risen. What a joy to live in that assurance that our sins have been removed through the death of our Lord Jesus and that we have life eternal through him. This morning we're using the order of service on page 203. And let us begin our worship with the singing of our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast. Lord, The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. And though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this, the fourth Sunday in Lent, is from Exodus chapter 16. And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. 
On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it, it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather of it each one of you as much as he can eat. You shall each take an omer, according to the number of the persons that each of you has in his tent. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered, some more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Each of them gathered as much as he could eat. And Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it over till the morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it till the morning, and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it, each as much as he could eat. But when the sun grew hot, it melted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. The second lesson is from Acts chapter 2. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God 
and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Holy Gospel. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him, because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain. And there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them, them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord. Who for us men and for our salvation. 
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Devoted themselves is pretty strong language. To devote yourself means you've made a commitment to something. And further, you've made that commitment not out of some sense of duty, but out of love. Think what it means to speak of a man as a devoted husband and father, or a woman as a devoted wife and mother. So those first Christians after receiving baptism on that joyous day of Pentecost, they devoted themselves to, they made a commitment out of love to, listening to the apostles' teaching, to sharing fellowship, to the breaking of the bread, and to joining together in the prayers. They were committed to living at the receiving end of God's good gifts. And look what happened. Their lives began to shine with the love of Christ himself as they provided for the poor in need out of new hearts that were both glad and generous said simply, if they had the divine service, they had enough and more than enough. And that freed them to live in acts of love. We might look at their giving away all their stuff and shake our heads, though. Live like that, and what will become of me, we wonder. Such is our unbelief. You see, they knew who they were living with. They knew who met them in the apostles' words, the communion, the prayer. They knew it was none other than he who knows how to multiply the loaves and the fish and provide for his people all that they need, more in fact, than they ever could imagine. Our Lord tosses Philip the hot potato to see if he's learned anything yet. But instead of tossing it right back to him, like he should have done, he plays with it and it ends up burning his hands. Jesus asks, Philip, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? Well, Philip starts looking out over the crowd. He does a little math. He comes up with the answer. 200 denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. And then Andrew joins in the game. There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? Just picture the three of them. Our Lord looking at the two disciples. Philip staring open mouth at the crowd. And Andrew shaking his head over the pitiful amount of food that he had found. Neither passed the test. You see, our Lord doesn't send us tests to find out how brilliant and ingenious we are, let alone to test our, our willpower. He always sends tests for us to toss them back to him and to look to him alone because the problems are too big for us to handle. And Jesus shows us that by what he does with the disciples next. Have the people sit down. Then he took the little amount of food 
and gave thanks for it and handed the little bit of food to the apostles to hand out. Just can you see Andrew looking at that little piece of bread in his hand as Jesus says, go give it out. Can you see Philip looking over the crowd and shaking his head? How long did it take them before they realized? How long before they discovered that no matter how much they give away, the Lord multiplied the food in their hand? They never felt as though they had any more than that little bit in their hands. But that little bit was more than enough with the blessing of Jesus. It in, was an in, inexhaustible supply. Twelve baskets of leftovers. One for each apostle. They wouldn't have had a basket full if they hadn't given it out. They would have just had a little piece. Are you beginning to see? They saw... And that's why we find those who devoted themselves to their teaching in the second reading, taking their earthly stuff and handing it over to those who were in need. They knew they weren't impoverishing themselves. They had made the joyful discovery that you cannot outgive the Lord Jesus. He gives, and you pass it on to others, and he multiplies and provides. But how can he multiply what is not given over? To have more than enough as you give it all away makes no sense in the ways of the world. But we must think of who teaches us this. Because it's not some principle of, of finance, but of life that he is disclosing here. He gave himself away, not in part, but in whole. He poured out himself for you, for me, for all of us. He emptied his life upon the cross so that he might forgive us. His blood blotting out our sin, including our sin of fear that tries to hold on to earthly stuff as though we can somehow squeeze some real life out of it. His life destroying our death by giving us a real life that never ends. <clears throat> he gave himself entirely to us. And you might think, <clears throat> well, if I do that, then there's nothing left. Maybe I better hang on to what I've got. His resurrection shows that's such a lie. This is why he would say, the one who saves his life will lose it. Well, the one who loses his life for my sake keeps it to eternal life. The one who gave his all is the one who lives forevermore. His body made incorruptible and the very fountain of salvation. And he goes on giving himself away. Feeding his people in the wilderness 
not with earthly food alone, but with himself. For he is the very word of God in the flesh to be our bread of life. Here at his table, he gives you a food that provides you more than you ever need. And that's how he frees you not to grasp, but to open the hand and give away your stuff, yes, but above all, your life. It's not just what he did when he multiplied the loaves. It's what he did when he went to Calvary. It's what he calls you and me to join him in doing now. Then we will know firsthand the joyful hearts of the first Christians on Pentecost because devoted like them, to the Lord's words, his meal, and the prayers, we'll find out that the one who poured out his life in death for us, and who now lives forevermore, that to have him is to have everything. And so our hearts will be set to give ourselves away entirely. And we'll then find ourselves among the company that the Lord adds to every day. The company of those who will be saved. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We arise for prayer. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone. A trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. Lord God, creator of the waters above, receive our thanksgiving for holy baptism whereby you have united Jew and Gentile in the death and resurrection of your Son. Enliven our confidence in this gracious gift, that we may continue together in its comfort and power. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, after the holy example of your Son, Jesus Christ, inspire all pastors to a devout care for their people and a continual desire to feed them with the bread of life. Awaken in the hearts of our congregations a mutual love for this faithful service in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, you blessed barren Sarah with Isaac, the child of promise, and brought salvation to the world through Christ, born of the Virgin Mary. Watch over the families of your church and comfort those families yet without children, that all together may find joy in their heavenly inheritance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, uphold in mercy all authorities, especially parents and the civil servants of our nation. Strengthen our homes and keep families firm in the Christian faith. Preserve our nation from wickedness and uphold order and justice for a peaceful life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, your heavenly care extends to all your children, especially those in, de in depth of need. Look in kindness upon Barb, Dylan, Pam, 
Matt, Kate, Rebecca, Janine, Patty, Daryl, Kinsley and Delilah, Neil, Odin, Beth, Tom, Sean and AJ, Addie and Roger. Let them find sustaining food for body and soul and such healing as your gracious will provides. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Lord God, you gave your ancient people bread from heaven that lasted but a day. You give us your Son as the heavenly bread that abides forever. Sustain our faith by his holy provision that we would not lose heart in the wilderness of this world, but endure to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son multiplied bread and fish for thousands, showing himself to be the creator and giver of every good gift. Multiply the gifts of body and soul you provide from your gracious hand, and cause us to receive your benefits with thanksgiving. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death, and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you when saying,
Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. At your command, Abraham prepared to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice on the mountain. Yet in mercy, you provided a ram as a substitute. We give you thanks that on Calvary, you spared not your only son, but sent him to offer his life as a ransom for many. As we eat and drink his body and blood, grant us, like Abraham our father, to trust in your promise now fulfilled in Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you, both body and soul, in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. Go now in his peace. Amen. give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Good morning once again. Uh, just a reminder, this week is uh, Durant and Wilton's break, and so there is no weekday school on Wednesday this week. We have it again the following week, so be sure and watch for that. Uh, there, if you would like to purchase an Easter lily to have in our sanctuary for Easter, uh, please uh, sign up. I think there's a sheet in the, on the bulletin board back there. Also. Uh, this morning I heard that there had been some cancellations for pictures, and so they have some openings, so if you're wanting to have your picture taken, uh, you can maybe be filled in today uh, and not have to wait. So that's up to you. You can talk to Katie or Beth uh, or Terry about that. Uh, Bible school registration is already open, so you can go, help, go online and get registered for Bible school. Uh, it kind of helps us to get ahead 
to know how many uh, materials we'll need to be getting. This Wednesday, we have our uh, Lenten service again at 7 o'clock, preceded by uh, a dinner at about 5.30, 5.45. There is still one Lenten service that hasn't been signed up for for the suppers. Uh, if uh, any of you can get together and, and take care of that, uh, it would be most appreciated. Any other announcements today? May God richly bless each and every one of you. Thank you.